I need everybody to stay calm. Stay calm. This is what we asked for. Before we start, make sure you guys hit that like button if you guys are enjoying the content. And also, make sure you guys check out BetUS for a 150% sign up bonus up to $2,000 on your first deposit. Second and third are 125% as long as you use, you use the promo code YouTube150. So make sure you guys check out BetUS. Now back to the video. What is going on, guys? What is going on, 27 Squad? Welcome back into another video. And listen, listen, forget about the scoreboard. Forget about the scoreboard. In all reality, the Giants won. I win. What do you mean you win? I had a hand just like that before. I didn't win. Because I win. Yes, that is right. The Giants actually won this game, and I'll tell you why. Um, I was supposed to go to this game. Thank God I didn't, even though, yes, I acknowledge the Giants won, but thank God I didn't go to this game. Actually, I bought tickets already. They were very, very cheap tickets by the time I bought them, so I'm not really concerned about losing out on that. Um, I didn't buy the tickets to, you know, take the flight up there. didn't buy hotel tickets, none of that, so I'm happy about that because I knew exactly the result that we were going to see. And as I'm scrolling Twitter, as this game is going on, I was really shocked by the feedback that a lot of people have been giving. The same people that are on the, the tank train, the same people who are who are willing to let Daniel Jones go, who want to tank and want to get a higher draft pick, some of these guys are the same guys complaining about what they're seeing on the field. You should be rejoicing. You should be rejoicing because the Giants aren't screwing up actually getting a high draft pick we screwed up and won three meaningless games in a row with Tommy DeVito and it got us out of Jaden Daniels you should be happy that we screwed up this game against Carolina and we screwed up this game against Tampa Bay and I, be, I will be completely honest with you these past two games against Carolina and Tampa Bay there were a lot of decisions by Brian Dable that make me scratch my head and say I think we are legitimately tanking. First of all, the decision to start Tommy DeVito over Drew Locke is already something that tells me that they are trying not to put their best foot out there, being that they did pay Drew Locke to be that backup quarterback and take over for Daniel Jones should he get hurt. They paid him a whole $5 million to do so on a one-year deal. I know that doesn't seem a lot in the grand scheme of things, but those $5 million could have been put towards Saquon Barkley and or it could have been put towards uh, Xavier McKinney or something like that, but they put it towards Drew Locke. And we all know Tommy DeVito is just, he's not good. Let's be honest with you. He's not good. This guy has one of the worst pocket press Presences I've ever seen in my entire life. He cannot he cannot identify pressure for his life. Uh, that's why he completely gets himself sacked all the time. The announcer said it themselves in six games last year, he got sacked 37 times. That's unheard of. So that's clear. A lot of the coaching decisions were clear as day that they were choke that we they were uh, um, kind of tanking the game away, kind of you know running the ball, not being too aggressive, and uh, going forward on fourth and two from your own territory, like once or twice actually, and not converting. And they they just did a lot of things where it was just kind of like, yeah, we're just trying to play this game to get out of here. That, that that's what it just seems like to me. And um, they weren't concerned about how much they were down. Um, Malik Neighbors didn't get the ball until the score was 30 to nothing. Malik Neighbors also had a lot to say. Check this out. Go out there first, second quarter. Don't get the ball. Start getting targets at the end. I mean, can't do nothing. Start getting the ball when it's 30 to zero. So what do you do? Why in the first half are they not looking at you? I don't know. Talk to Dave about that. Talk to Dave. Say something to the coaches at that time? I mean, they know. They come up to me, ask me what plays I want. That was that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, man. Brian Burns even came out and said, like, listen, like, we're playing like ass right now. Like, this is terrible. I'm not even a rah-rah guy. I'm not much of a of a of a leader. I'm not much of a guy that goes out there and be, uh, becomes a motivational speaker. But I had to say something. I had to say what's on my chest. That says a lot for a guy that's usually quiet in the crowd. Usually not much of a guy to be the the strong motivational guy to step up and say something. And he's new to the team. This is his first season as a New York Giant, and he's probably the one of the highest paid guys on this roster right now. Dexter Lawrence even came out and said this team just played soft. Jermaine Illuminor said that he doesn't think that everybody's giving 100%. So you can tell the locker room is just in the disarray right now. Um, I, will be, I will be shocked if 
Joe Shane and Brian Day will keep their jobs at the end of the season. Now, we talked about this in a huge, like, we talked about this so much over the past couple of weeks if Joe Shane or Brian Dable are going to keep their jobs and how confident Joe Shane was that he was going to keep his job, a job along with Brian Dable. But, I, I mean, this ass whooping that we just saw, and I, I get it, it just, uh, it, it seems like they're tanking. Here's the thing, guys. I will say this again, and I said it before. If the Giants are indeed tanking, Joe Shane and Brian Dable will keep their jobs because this is part of the plan to tank. If they are legitimately trying to win these games and they're getting beat to a pulp like like we just saw in this game, then they will lose their jobs. But if they're tanking, obviously John Mara is in the loop of things. And uh, they see where and, and, and for those of you guys that don't know, players aren't part of the tanking. All right. They're not telling the players to go out there and lose on purpose for draft picks. Players are out there trying to do their best, trying to put their best foot forward. When coaches are tanking, they're not telling the players what's going on. They're making the coaching decisions. They're making the play calls that, to put them in losing positions to lose games. Co players are not part of the tanking. Also, let's talk about this defense. For those of you guys that kept saying, oh man, this defense is so good, KB. You were wrong about this defense. We, we lead the league in sacks. What happens when uh, the sacks aren't there? What happens when the sacks aren't there? What what is more, what adds to this defense more than just the sacks? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Uh, Bobby Skinner said it himself. You know, when you take away the sacks, is the most bland defense defensive scheme you've ever seen. It is. It is a piss poor version of a Vic Fangio defense where you're just rushing for lack of blitzing, playing soft coverage, playing back in and you know cover two and just playing soft. Um, bend but do not break constantly that's what you're seeing um, and it's not working it's not working up to this point it is the most bland vanilla defense you've ever seen it is completely night and day from what you saw the last couple of years with Wink Martindale it's a terrible defense I'm tired of everybody keep saying that oh but KB they lead the league in sacks guys the defensive line wasn't even that much part of it yes Aziz Ojolari and Brian Day uh Brian Day Brian Burns came up late right uh Dexter Lawrence still leads the team in sacks with nine but don't forget in those beginning weeks of the of the season who had the most sacks it was it was Micah McFadden it was Jason Pinnock it was guys that are not even on the defensive line and then they started to catch up and started to get a lot of coverage sacks and a lot of cleanup sacks and that's what really kind of kind of boosted them up but the the linebacker core is okay it's nothing special Mike McFadden is actually having a pretty good year the secondary is just completely garbage a lot of people like to talk about Tyler Newbin Tyler Newbin is not good what a waste of a second round pick what a waste of JMS as a second round pick as well I don't know why I've always said this since the beginning guys you guys can look back at my videos I never knew the hype around JMS Never knew the height. He just seemed like a good center. He didn't seem like anything that was worth the first round pick. A lot of you guys wanted him in the first round. Thank God we didn't take him in the first round. But it's not like Deontay Banks is that much better anyway. The offensive line is absolutely in shambles. I can't believe that Joe Shane has had this team for three years now. And the best he can come up with at swing tackles is Evan Neal, who is already a failed a draft pick still keeping him there and then a guy that we picked up off the 49ers practice squad like four weeks ago like that is the best Joe Shane can do right now at swing tackle and there is no plan there's no contingency at all and it got Tommy DeVito absolutely killed out there not like Tommy De DeVito was helping things anyway he just runs himself into sacks but I'm not mad at the result guys because right now the Giants have the second overall pick in the NFL draft right in front right in back of the Jacksonville Jaguars we know Jacksonville just signed Trevor Lawrence to a huge contract Trevor Lawrence is hurt as of right now but obviously they're not going quarterback the the most we can the most we can worry about is Jacksonville if it's everything remains the same is if Jacksonville trades down to another spot and somebody trades up for the first quarterback taken depends on what the Giants see and who what quarterback they like but they may want to you know get up to that number one overall pick they'll probably have to give up another first rounder because that's how high that's how uh, highly value valuable this the first overall pick is so they may have to be a highest bidder there even though they're only one pick down um so there's that but guys listen listen the Giants won today all right do not be angry about what you saw on the field just let it go we have six more games to endure 
and six more games we need to lose, okay? We need to lose. We have to be one of those teams. I'm sorry, guys. I've never been like this in my entire life, but now I'm fully committed to it. Now I'm fully committed to it. You saw me rooting for wins last year when nothing mattered. Now this year, I've opened my eyes. Now I see, I realize that we need to lose games to get better draft picks and rebuild this team the right way. As far as Brian Dable and Joe Shane goes, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, more content throughout the week. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys are new. And we'll see you all in the next video. Woo!